subject today has been kind of focusing more on domain, right? Because domain is more applicable to three-dimensional applications, okay? So all that 2D stuff, it's, it's formative and it's instructional about how to understand data structures and everything like that. And it is a good idea to practice that way sometimes, like when you're trying to work out what you're going to do on your model. If, if dealing with vectors and stuff to get the general idea is too complex, it's a good place to start. Then worry about the vectors and three-dimensional applications later. Um, and that's exactly the workflow that we, went, that we went through here. We made sure it worked in 2D, then we worried about vectors. Now, um, the, the fact of the matter is, most of what we do is going to be based on domains, not grids. That's a very important distinction, right? Because grids are based off of a point that you have to locate. Then it's going to you know, expand, and you have to tell it how far to expand, um, and then you know, operate within it. The reason domains are more powerful is because they are predefined boundaries for your order of operations. Meaning, I don't have to start at this corner point here and then tell it that I, I need this grid to go this high and I need this grid to extend that far across the surface. I don't have to tell it that. I can just say, this is my maximum boundary and I'm going to subdivide it this many times. That's only one operation that you can do within a domain. But how do you do operations within a domain but not really operate on the maximum domain? Does that make any sense to you? Well, well in a second. Um, what I mean by the maximum domain is the maximum extents of the surface itself. So if you're looking at, let me try and find a, a quick example. Um, perfect example. If you're looking at a facade system, right? Um, you can kind of see elements of what we do with Grasshopper in this facade. You have, you have um, vertical, so you basically have a full field, right? That's the whole facade. And you have subdivisions. In this case, we have the, they kind of overlap. We'll talk about, we'll get into the complexities of that later. But to simplify the idea, you can see the, the vertical cables as a subdivision of each section, right? So if I put a reference surface across the front of this, and I said, all right, I'm going to subdivide in my V direction this many times, I already have the, the basic structure upon which I can build that facade. Then you operate within those boundaries. But the horizontal louver here is a little bit different, right? That's just a subdivide operation. Each one of these horizontal louvers needs to be built a particular way. And this one's a little maybe oversimplified. Um, something like this might be a little more appropriate to explain. Um, each one of these windows you could consider like a package, right? Like a window bay. So this right here, oh, I don't have a thing. Hang on, let me grab my snip tool. I love this thing. Snip tool? No. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. So um, each one of these windows here, why isn't it writing? That's weird. All right, anyway, I was trying to write on it, but it's not writing. Anyway, um, so each one of these windows is a, a, a package unit, which means that it is a domain. It is a domain that probably was subdivided from a larger domain. And the sunshade system within that is an even further subdivided domain or set of domains, right? So what, you're, what you should be taking away from this is that um, algorithmic systems happen at many different scales at once. And our task is to layer them, offset them, extrude them, subdivide them, reduce them, and basically calibrate them into something that creates these systems. Does that make sense, conceptually? Yeah, all right, well, no response is better than bad responses. All right, so um, 
I guess I'm going to very simply introduce you to the idea of the reduction of domains. Okay, and it looks similar to what we did here. Okay, this was divide domain. Divide domain just took that whole overall thing and we just broke it up by this many um, sections. If you go back into the domain menu and you do um, construct domain squared. This one is going to behave slightly differently. Um, and in fact, I think, well, yeah, I'll just operate on it right here. Let me move this stuff to the side. In case you need to follow along with me, all I did was take everything that happens after this first subdivision, and I just gave myself a little bit of working room. <clears throat> okay, so these two are correlated. This one subdivides, this one reduces, or rather establishes, a boundary. The, the difference is that subsurface is, um, isotrim is, is like a subdivide surface function, but it has a setting, and it's a hidden setting. So you've got to pay attention to these ones very, very closely. Um, I'm going to duplicate this, and I'm going to replace it with this. Um, but what you'll need to know about it is that the surface input needs to um, basically be reparametrized. Okay? Um, yeah, I might need to hide some stuff later. But if you right click on S, there's this really, really long word, reparametrize. And what that's going to do is it's going to basically establish all of these values that are being plugged in via this domain squared to be a proportional relationship to the original surface. So um, I'm going to jump back here real quick and hide all this stuff. Whoops. So that you can really see what's going on. Turn that preview on. And uh, yeah, hide that surface. All right, in case you missed that, all I did was hide everything here, everything, and I turned on this new subsurface with the parametrized. That's the only thing in my definition that's on right now. <clears throat> um, so what, what is the, the domain squared function, right? It has four inputs, which you can see has a relationship again to the divide domain squared, but it looks different, right? We have a u0 and a u1 and a V0 and a V1. If you read what it says, it says U0 is the lower limit of domain in the U direction. And I know that sounds like jargon right now. It probably doesn't make much sense to you, but the lower limit means how close to the, the, that index boundary is my domain going to stretch or how far away from it is it going to be reduced, okay? So we need a slider here um, from a, a zero to a one. That's really, really important. And you probably need to define, um, think of it as like uh, a factor of 100%, right? So if you're doing 100% values and I ask you to make it 57% of, of a reduction, you probably wanna make sure you have two decimal places. So you all should have zero, less than 1.00 sliders on all four of these. Okay, so you're going to want four. And then feel free to just plug them in. Oops. Um, at first, and I, you guys probably are still catching up, but I'm not introducing anything new yet. I just want to finish the thought. You're going to see this message. It says that it's invalid because of, you know, domain stuff and trimming, and it doesn't make any sense in layman's terms. That just means that with a 0% reduction on everything, there's no, there's no domain to be made. So I need to have my minimum value at 0 and my maximum value at something other than 0 in this case. So I'll slide this up to 100. Now it's still an error because my Vmax also has to be 100. So you guys see what's happening there? Mm -hmm. 
that making some sense? Yeah? So what this is doing is it's creating a proportional relationship from 0% on one end to 100% on the other end, and 0% on one end uh, the other direction, and then 100%. So if I need something that's a little bit smaller than that original surface, I can reduce these values like this. And when compared, you can see that it, it just kind of pulled it to be a little bit smaller across the length of that surface. Okay, so uh, that was a very, very long explanation. explanation. It was, in fact, 10 minutes long or 11 minutes long that I explained that. But all I actually did was introduce these things right here, these two things, and then the sliders, of course. What questions do you have? Yeah. The domain one, which one? That's under math and domain. Oops. Construct domain squared? Yes, construct domain squared. What did you do on the isotrim next to surface? What does that do? Reparametrize. Let's do this. Put a uh, scribble. So I'm going to stop this video, and then we're going to jump into why we're actually doing this.